Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense coming at you guys with a fragrance review today of a new fragrance release from the house of Coach. And the fragrance is this one right here, Coach Blue. Telling you right away what this fragrance is, what type of fragrance, what style of fragrance, a blue fragrance. So that means you would expect it to be versatile, people pleasing, mass appealing, compliment getting, you know the drill. So this is the one on deck for today. And this one has recently gone on sale at Macy's. I don't have a Macy's locally, so I just picked it up from their website. One thing I would tell you guys is if you're looking for this one and you go on Macy's and you sort the fragrances by new, at least when I did, I couldn't find this anywhere. It was buried. So I had to actually specifically search for this fragrance, Coach Blue. Otherwise I couldn't really find it. At least not while browsing through. I went through like 10 pages, didn't see it and just searched it. So uh, I talked to a couple of people actually, and they said they didn't know that this was out, that when they had gone on Macy's website and looked for it, they didn't see it. That's why I bring it up to you. In this video, we're gonna check out the presentation just really briefly, and then we'll jump into the fragrance itself, and I will let you guys know what I think about Coach Blue and whether this is a fragrance that I think you should add to your potential blue fragrance rotation. So let's jump into this. First off, a quick look at the presentation. The box first, on the front of the box, it says the name of the house, Coach New York, with the little Coach logo there. Name of the fragrance, size and concentration at the bottom of the box. It also has this kind of leather pattern almost to the box itself, but it's not really textured all that much, but it does have the kind of a, like a leather grain look to the box itself. Nothing on the top of the box, nothing on the sides of the box, and really, not much of anything on the back of the box either. On the bottom of the box, you'll find your badge code and then your ingredient information as well. And I'm going to try to remember to do this going forward, but I'll go ahead and read the badge code off for you guys. I know there are a small number of people out there that really get into the badge codes and they would like that mentioned. So I'm gonna to try to do that, but if I forget going forward, you'll have to forgive me. So this one has quite the badge code, 08K08J, 323A. And in case you don't know why the badge code would matter, that essentially tells you when this bottle was manufactured. So if many years in the future, this fragrance should be reformulated and the, the fragrance should change up how it smells, you'll be able to reference what I'm talking about in this video today with this badge code and this uh, release month and year. And here's the bottle for Coach Blue. It's the same as the other coach fragrances in terms of the bottle style. The atomizer is built right into the top here and you can actually turn it to the side like so if you want to lock the atomizer. So if you were traveling or something and you put the, the bottle in a bag and you didn't want it to spray out, you could try to do that to keep it from leaking a little bit possibly. It's got the little coach logo on the front of the bottle. It's got a nice gradient from blue down to clear. I'll go ahead and waste the spray of the uh, fragrance for you so you can check the atomizer out. There you go. Well, you wasted three sprays technically. It has this little tag that hangs down, this little leather tag that says Coach New York. It also has kind of a leather tag that goes around the uh, bottle where it connects to the atomizer. And then your sticker on the bottom with batch code. I think I'll start here just with a quick overview, a very quick overview of the Coach men's line of fragrances. So right now, the Coach men's line consists of three scents, the original Coach for Men here, and then Coach Platinum, and now Coach Blue, the newest one. Before these fragrances, Coach actually had a leatherware line of fragrances for men, and I found those to be really nice, kind of a, a change of pace from most designer fragrances. They're all discontinued now, and like I said, they were leatherware fragrances, so each one was a leather type of scent, a different type of leather. And some of those fragrances go for a lot on eBay now, those discontinued Coach Leatherware scents. So after the discontinuation of the Leatherware fragrances, they came out with this, a little bit down the road, Coach for Men. And this one has a similarity to Jimmy Choo for Men. 
And those two fragrances, Jimmy Choo for Men and Coach for Men, are both pretty good cheap buys. They're not very expensive from discounters. They do pretty much the same thing. They're very versatile, people-pleasing, compliment-pulling kind of fragrances. They don't have beast mode performance or anything like that, but they're gonna get the job done in pretty much any circumstance or situation. So they're really useful for a lot of guys out there for those reasons, affordability and versatility. That one, uh, the original Coach for Men, has a couple of interesting fruit notes in there like pear and kumquat that you don't see that often, but really it smells pretty close to Jimmy Choo for Men. Just a basic blue fragrance, but it smells nice. And then this one came out, Coach Platinum. Seemed to get a little bit more love than Coach for Men. And this one actually gets compared to Dior Sauvage. It's not the same as Dior Sauvage, just like this isn't the same as Jimmy Choo for Men, but you would use it in pretty much the same situations. And this one has an interesting note in it of pineapple, though no similarity to Aventus, of course. And that's gonna bring us to Coach Blue. And this one, I was expecting something more along the lines of, I don't know, maybe Bleu de Chanel, Dylan Blue, something like that. But this one actually smells, to me, more like a sport fragrance or a gym fragrance. This one doesn't have a super complicated note breakdown. The two top notes in this fragrance are lime and absinthe. And one of those is out of place, and it's not the lime. It's of course the absinthe. That's not a note that you would think of in a summertime fragrance typically. A lot of times you'll see that as wormwood in fragrances, wormwood, absinthe, in a lot of different scents, they're kind of interchangeable. And the absinthe here really doesn't actually smell like absinthe. When I first sprayed this fragrance on, it reminded me of another fragrance that has come out this year, and that is Azaro Wanted tonic, which interestingly enough also has lime as one of the top notes. And that's where a big similarity, at least for me personally, comes in with that fragrance and this fragrance. The lime in Azaro Wanda Tonic is very similar to the lime here in Coach Blue. It is not a hyper-realistic lime note. It's not sour or tart or really zingy. It actually comes across more like a shower gel kind of scent. And that's what I'd mentioned just a little bit ago. It comes across like a sport fragrance, like a gym fragrance, just like a generic kind of fresh, clean type of scent. And that's what Azaro Wanted Tonic is, or for that matter, Azaro Sport, which also came out this year. And that's what this is. Coach Blue. In the mid of this fragrance, there are ozonic notes and black pepper. The ozonic notes come across more like an ambroxan type of note to me, evident right there at the beginning, as soon as you spray this on. As far as the pepper goes, I don't get a whole bunch of that. Maybe just a little bit, a little nuance, a little dusting of black pepper, but there's not a whole bunch of spice in here. When you first spray this one on, it's mainly just that, again, I keep saying it, but gym sport kind of citrus. And if you've smelled a lot of sport fragrances, the citrus in there is, is what it's like in here. It's not realistic, but it is clean. Again, shower jelly is what a lot of people would say, that it smells like a, a sport shower gel. The absinthe gives off just a little, little green touch, like a little nuance of absinthe, but it doesn't actually smell like absinthe or wormwood. It's not realistic, and really to me, it's more just kind of marketing almost that they put it in there like, oh, there's absinthe. We're really switching things up here. Because when you spray it on, that goes right out the window. <laughs> Any kind of originality is just like, <clears throat> nope. In the base of the fragrance, there's amber and cedar wood, and you do pick those up as the fragrance dries down. More so, those just come across as warmth, like generic warmth. It doesn't smell bad. It's just not like a realistic cedar wood or anything like that. Now, I know it sounds like I'm ragging on this fragrance a lot, but it doesn't smell bad. So it's not the kind of fragrance that is gonna turn people off. It's not the kind of fragrance that's gonna get negative reactions. That's not my issue with the scent. My issue with the scent is that it's just kind of a uh, boring sport fragrance. It doesn't really smell like a whole heck of a lot of thought was put into it. I kind of lump it right in there with Azaro Wanted Tonic and Azaro Sport, which both came out this year. And just today, actually, there was a new Bulgari fragrance announced, and it looks like there's a possibility that that one is also going to be like a blue sport gym fragrance. I'll talk about that on an upcoming This Week in Fragrance video in the near future, but it's almost starting to look like 2020 summer releases is the year of just sport fragrances that smell like they should be 20, 25 bucks. 
For me personally, of the three fragrances in the Coach for Men line, this one is the one I like the least. So I would easily take the original and platinum over this one. Again, this does not smell bad. It just smells nondescript. I, I could imagine people saying, yeah, you smell clean, you smell fresh, you smell nice. And those are all good things, but it's not really the kind of fragrance that you're gonna smell and then remember it. It's not the kind of fragrance that's gonna leave much of a lasting impression. It's just kind of one of those ones that you spray on. People might walk by you and be like, hey, you smell nice. And that's that. But then it's not gonna be that kind of fragrance that really digs its hooks <laughs> into your brain or somebody else's, that sounds weird, but that you know keeps them coming back. Or really, like I said, makes an impression where when they smell that fragrance, they think of you. That's not the type of synthesis. This is kind of just something you throw in a gym bag and when you leave the gym, you spray it on. Or if you're going outside and it's hot out to a casual kind of thing, then you spray that on liberally and you're good to go. So while I don't think it smells bad, I think you should wait until it's like $25, $30. In that range, it'd be a fine pickup. At full retail, it's a hard pass for me, it's a no-go. So my recommendation is wait for this to hit discounters and then pick it up for the price that these are going for, roundabout, more like the price this one is going for, the original. That's where you should get this one. And if you spray that on side by side with the Zara Wanted Tonic, you'll see what I'm talking about as far as that lime note goes that's in this one and also in Wanted Tonic. It's almost like all these companies got together this year and they said, guys, can we just release some, some generic stuff this year? Can we all be on the same page? And they said, yeah, man. Sounds good to me, let's do it. And here we are. I'm ragging on this really hard, but for what it does, which are the things that I've been mentioning, it does that fine. Just don't go into this expecting something mind-blowing, something really new, you know, pushing blue fragrances in a new direction. That's not what happened here. Now, really quickly, as far as when you'd wear this, spring, summer, daytime, that's pretty much it for me, spring, summer, daytime. More casual fragrance, you could wear it to the office as well. In terms of performance, four to five hours, it's not great, and that kind of puts it right in line with this one here. Projection is gonna be best in the first 30 to 45 minutes, then it starts to stick closer to the skin. So not really a great performer for me, maybe slightly below average. And I'll tell you one thing that's really funny to me, when Versace Dylan Blue first came out, a lot of people ragged on it and they said, you know, Versace Dylan Blue, one of the worst blue fragrances that you can buy. At the time it was released, a lot of people were hating on it. After all the blue fragrances that have come out after Dylan Blue that have been worse than Dylan Blue, Dylan Blue keeps getting bumped up the designer blue fragrance hierarchy. It's just going up every time because all these new fragrances are coming out and they're getting slotted in underneath Dylan Blue and Dylan Blue keeps getting better and better in retrospect. You may disagree with me there, but when I go and smell Dylan Blue versus this and some of the other blue fragrances that have come out, I'm like, whew, Dylan Blue's got a lot of depth compared to this. But that's all personal taste and you could completely disagree with me on that and if so, more power to you. All right, that's gonna do it for me guys with Coach Blue. Uh, wait on this one, check it out when you can in stores, and then pick it up from discounters, my opinion. As always guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. Stay safe out there.